Today I've been setting up my craft fair stall just as a test, just because I haven't um, done a craft fair in a good few years now and I haven't done one with sewn goods, so this is like the first time trying to lay out bags and quilts and stuff. Um, so the idea is, this is what I've got so far, I've got some of the a uh, stall dedicated to my animal portrait quilts that I can take special orders for and I'm going to put a little sign in here just saying that prices start from $500 that you can pay in installments that kind of thing and then um, I have most of the table is my bags and wallets and things I've been making over the last few weeks so we have um, some keychains because it always helps to have some smaller priced uh, goods um, these two I've put together because of the same fabric, so hopefully I can sell them together. I've got, this is a new bag that I made, I finished making yesterday, let's move that out of the way. This is a Nora bag, um, with an added pocket to the front, made from Cotton Steel's Bluebird print, uh, Tula Pink stripes from, um, the, uh, whatever the cat range was called, I can't remember what it was called now. Um, and a couple of different coloured metals in the rivets. And red vinyl. I also finished making these squiffy bags. Uh, this guy here, the raccoon one, and the bear one. I finished those on Friday evening. Those um, I'm really pleased with and I've got the nice brown leather. This one, because it's directional fabric though, I've created another video which um, will be going live tomorrow about how to use directional fabric on it. Because normally you would cut this piece out all in one go and that flap would end up being upside down. So I do have a little video on that coming up. Um, so the rest of it is all of the bags that I've still got waiting to sell it that are in my Etsy shop. And I've got some dog collars, small ones at $15, large ones at $20. And then these wallets, which I'm going to price at $40. They're a little bit cheaper than my online pricing. Um, just so I can round the numbers up and I don't have to worry too much about um, sort of giving change and stuff. I guess I should talk about sort of pricing strategy next. Pricing can be difficult. Um, I know that people struggle a little bit and worry that they're pricing too high, um, especially when you compare to prices in the shops. If you can buy a handbag for, you know, $30 from Old Navy or what have you, then you think, well, you know, I've got to be competitive with that. But the difference is um, people know that they're buying handmade and if they're going to compare to handmade, uh, if they're going to compare handmade to shop bought then they're not your um, audience anyway so what you need to do is to consider how much time that you put into it um, work out what an hourly wage would be work out what you, all your materials cost and then put that together for a very simple way of doing it if you plan to um, sell to shops um, they also usually mark it up by another 50% uh, so they'll double the price that you give them so that they make 50% of the selling price um, so you might want to take that into consideration as well. Um, the problem as well is that if you underprice yourself, you're actually devaluing the whole market. So everybody else that makes um, purses, wallets, whatever it might be, um, it, the, if you compare those prices, if you're selling on Etsy for example, why would someone pay um, $100 for um, a nicely made bag when you're selling yours for 50 and it just kind of makes everyone expect that handmade should cost less and it doesn't um, reflect the value of your time particularly either so work out the time, work out your um, materials you will also have things like overheads so that would be things like listing costs on Etsy it might be the electricity to run your sewing machine and your iron it could be the gas to drive to the post office to drop off your parcels um, when you're posting it. Um, so there's lots of other factors as well. That's why it's worth considering charging a bit more than just your time and just your materials. Um, but I understand that you don't want to be too high. Um, so it's always worth looking at what other people are pricing them at too. Um, so you don't want to be selling your bags for $200 when everyone else is selling them for 100 And this kind of goes back to what I was saying about devaluing um, the market as well, because everyone will compare themselves to each other. But um, good sort of rule of thumb is to not compare yourself to the um, big sort of uh, the big high street brands just because you can't compete with them there's no way that you ever could do that um, they're made out in um, Thailand and places where they pay a much lower wage 
um, which is why they put the factories over there because they don't have to pay the staff quite so highly. The materials they buy in bulk more so than we, we can ever do and it's just not feasible to compare yourself with that so don't. So I was saying I've made a few bags this week and hopefully next week will be more of a quilty update. Um, though there's a good chance I won't be doing a vlog next week because next week is the week of the market. If you wanted to subscribe to my channel I, I would really appreciate that. The button is down um, below this video if you're watching on YouTube. And um, on there you, you will then get updates when I put new tutorials up and things and also be entered into a prize draw to win a pre-cut of your choice. Uh, there is a video about that if you're not already a subscriber it should be the main video on my channel if you wanted to go and watch that before you subscribe and then see what the prizes will be. This bag I finished making yesterday, I actually kind of started making it yesterday which is a very unusual for me to make a thing in just one day. I was going to try and make this top magnetic just because I don't like how it gapes but I really could not get magnetic tape to work. So my plan was to not interface it or anything and to slide magnets in there because then there's nothing else between the magnets other than two layers of fabric but it still wasn't strong enough which was really disappointing. So the top isn't reinforced as well as it normally is, it just has boning in no other interfacings um, but this this swivel clasp feels really good in my hands I'm really pleased with the quality of that um, I've stuffed it a little bit because I'm going to have it so it stands nicely on my um, craft fair stall although it does stand up pretty good it just needed a little bit more to fill out the shape um, so I've got a nice black and white lining in this one and the rivets I've done in both copper and silver and the reason for that is because I had a silver swivel clasp but, but I could not find uh, three quarter of an inch silver um, rectangle rings in time without having to get them shipped to me and then I wouldn't have time to finish making the bag. So I used my copper ones that I had and then decided well I can put copper and silver rivets in um, and then make it look like I meant it to be like that. So that's bag number one. I won't pick up the squiffy bags because I've attached them to the table for, for right now. So I'll just kind of hold them like this. Um, but these are squiffies like you've seen before. I actually did have a mistake uh, with these where I cut the lining the wrong way around. So you cut the outer fabric one way and then you, you flip the lining pack pattern upside down or you cut on the reverse of the lining fabric so that they line up. So I, I had to detach the uh, flap top there and then add a seam allowance and then stitch it back on but I did manage to rescue it because I only discovered this after I'd put in the um, pockets so <laughs> it was a bit of a scary moment. I thought that I'd spent hours on these things for no reason. Uh, so these are um, fake leather and it's one of the cotton and steel black and white two prints with the IKEA fabric interior which I haven't had to interface because it's a thicker fabric and the uh, magnetic snaps that I got from Emmeline bags which is my favourite place to get them from. Um, so I have two of those now. I've got this one and the bare one um, that I made this weekend. I finished them on Friday. To give you an idea of what I price these at, uh, these I have a price tag of $60 on. So they're one of my cheaper bags just because they don't take as long to make. Um, other bags of mine, they, they're $100 is the highest price that I have on my market. But um, online there are some that I, some of them are actually priced up a little bit higher than that. I just know that for a local market it probably won't the person who was willing to pay that price won't be there but they might be looking online. Um, so I thought I'll take them along anyway, just see how it goes. I'm almost not expecting to sell any of the $100 bags if I'm perfectly honest but I've got my business cards ready. I can give them out, I can take um, orders on my quilts um, or at least talk about them and mention that my um, sort of book et is coming out in August. You've heard it here first. Um, and just kind of put my name out there I guess. Um, I'm only doing this one fair. We'll see what kind of feedback I get from people and then maybe I'll do some more next year.